Coming up right here on Weather Underground, a really active first week. Welcome in, everyone. Thanks for staying with us here on Weather Underground, and Happy New Year to you. I'm Mike Bettis. I'm Alex Wilson. Hopefully you got some rest this weekend, not the West Coast where it was very active. Mm. The rest of the country, yeah. weather also on the increase. Yeah, maybe we can make a resolution to be safe yeah, in yeah. inclement weather yeah. this year. We've got two different seasons playing out, winter weather and severe springtime weather yeah. almost. You look here, winter storm Hudson, a lot of snows coming in for us here. Double digit snows, not to mention some really dangerous ice too. Yeah. Yeah, that could cause problems both on the roads and in terms of power outages. And then we've got the dangerous severe weather threat today across the Mid-South, tomorrow Gulf Coast and southeastern states. Torcon values are as high as five both yeah. days, including for, de for today, places like Shreveport up to Little Rock. And some of this threat may last overnight. And then for some of you, that threat returns tomorrow, maybe at times you're not anticipating, maybe early morning even. Yeah, that's why we say so. Just mentioned how warm and muggy it is in Shreveport, Louisiana. That's where we find meteorologist Chris Bruin and monitoring today's severe threat there. Hey, Crystal Rock, as Mike just showed you, could be a few rounds of heavy rain and thunderstorms. So a virtual view, again, starting off on the cloudy side, but expecting that tornado watch to get posted closer to the metro area. And so this afternoon, you can see the gusty wind blowing the rain sideways and enough rain that could trigger a flood watch in the region through tonight, or flash flood warnings could even be issued. Right now, a five on our tour con for the Little Rock metro area. So even a little bit north of town before things uh, turn off in terms of our severe and tornadic danger. We drop that to a three and then obviously even lower the farther north that you go. But parts of central Arkansas, you are very much in the mix. And with a Torcon of five, that tells us a few things. One, dangerous weather is anticipated and tornado watches are likely. We will likely see one posted for this area. In this uh, range, Torcon of five, strong tornadoes are possible. Want to make sure you know where you are, know where your safe spot is, and have a way to get those warnings. And if you get the warnings, to move to that safe spot as fast as possible. Flood watches are posted. So again, I mentioned that we could see some flash flood warnings issued given all of that rain that we're going to see this afternoon. So Mike showed us the big picture, but let's take a closer look at the Little Rock area. I think by early to mid afternoon, we begin to at least see scattered showers and thunderstorms, a little bit more coverage across the area as we move towards the late day drive. So four, five, six o'clock, I think will be very active. And then again, the evening hours, eight, nine, 10, 11, also active. That's why we've got that additional flood concern. So in addition to the fact that we've got to watch for severe weather, we could see flash flooding because of the rounds of very, very heavy rain. You see the reds and even the burgundy color. That's indicative of that very heavy torrential downpour action. And then into the overnight hours, quick burst of showers moving through, and we'll be watching that uh, moving east into tomorrow morning. Things turning much quieter for the morning hours that you'll likely be up and about. Uh, overnight tornado safety, things to think about, though, because some of these areas are getting into at least the late evening or overnight hours. You want to prepare that safe room with snacks, helmets, shoes, protective coverings, anything the kids need to be comfortable. That favorite toy. Uh, don't forget about your pets, leashes, carriers for them, and communicate with your family about the severe threat so everybody's ready to move. Mike? Tell us a lot of things about winter storm Hudson. One, you got that big dip in the jet stream, and we've begun to see this uh, tilt off towards a more northwest to southeast tilt. That's a negative tilt. A lot of the rising air is going to be over here. A lot of the motion over here, or a lot of the moisture over here as well. So this is where we've got that lift, where we've got that severe threat with that negative tilt. We, of course, have been talking about that, but on the north side of this, big time snow. And here's our low wrapping up across parts of the uh, state of Colorado, and that's going to bring us some big winds as well. So right now we've got a little snow around Casper and Rapid City. It's pretty light snow at this point. Rain showers around the Moab area and then Hayes, Kansas, 36 with rain. We've got Omaha at 35 with rain. You had a little farther to the north. That's where we've got the snow. But North Platte, by the way, uh, reporting some ice. So there is a narrow stretch of ice across sections of the Plain States. Temperatures in the low 30s for most areas. It's 23, a little drier up towards the Minneapolis area. Winter storm warning. Those are going to go into effect through tomorrow. Ice storm warnings here for parts of Nebraska, a little bit of South Dakota, northwest Iowa, southern sections of the state of Minnesota. So significant ice possible in these areas. And this is where we could be looking at really dangerous road conditions. So uh, not po there it goes. I was going to say it's not populated. I'm going to have to tell you how it is. Uh, there's a look at where we could see the impactful ice. So anytime you're getting over a quarter inch, that's when you can expect widespread bad road conditions. Even some areas on the east side of Sioux City. 
city could see higher than a half an inch of ice. And that's where you really get into the problematic territory when it comes to power outages. So over a half an inch of ice, you can expect more widespread power outages. Luckily with this one, it's a, a pretty narrow scope of that coverage, but still some areas will look at significant icing. Again, that gets us into that damaging criteria with some tree damage and numerous power outages. Obviously, the road conditions are going to be horrible. On the north side, it is snow moving into Minneapolis by late afternoon and evening hours, although hovering around the city until tomorrow morning when that snow really begins to move in and take over through the day. You can see we uh, see that low bring snow across the Sioux City, Sioux Falls area on the heels of any icy precip. Mike? the Midwest with a closer look at what Hudson's going to be bringing us. Uh, rain changes to snow on the back side of the storm, but windy with rain out ahead of this on the warmer side. So much of the Midwest and the Northeast, even extreme northern sections of New York and New England are generally seeing rain. Some pockets of ice, but a lot more areas getting in on just rain. So it'll be blustery and soggy across the region. Colder air spreading east as the low begins to work over the Great Lakes. So on the back side of this, that cold air wrapping around with our low pressure jumping towards the uh, northeast coastline. We will see that rain change over to snow for interior parts of the northeast. So western Pennsylvania, New York, northern sections of New York and into New England, even parts of the Appalachians there in West Virginia, seeing some snow with a little rain snow mix for places like Huntington and Charleston. So the lower elevations there in the state. As we time this out into the day tomorrow, again, a lot of areas getting in on the wet weather. That's Detroit, Pittsburgh, Buffalo. Wednesday morning, still raining from Pittsburgh to Charleston up to Buffalo Burlington seeing some showers but again on the back side of this as we move into the day Thursday now we begin to see some of those snow showers approaching places like Detroit and Saginaw and Traverse City also some snow in northern parts of New York and New England by the time we get into late Thursday now that snow working into parts of the Ohio Valley going to be a quick shot not much in the way of accumulations but at least enough to remind you Mike it's January January picking up right where December left off across the west yet Another major storm poised to batter California with more heavy rain and mountain snow. This coming, of course, on the heels of a significant weekend storm that turned deadly. Molly McCollum has more. And more rounds coming, so a little bit of a catch your breath, breath kind of break. And then more wet weather, more wintry weather headed our way. Again, coming on the heels of the second wettest day ever there in San Francisco, over five inches. And by the way, they were, what, eight hundredths of an inch away from the number one spot, so it was close. Over the last seven days, you can see a lot of that rain has been focused across California, Washington, Oregon, especially there as the, uh, you get into the upslope areas. That's where we have exceeded 12 inches of rain, but even approaching a half a foot there in San Francisco. This is going to do some good to the drought, but it takes more wet weather over time, of course. It's not just one big event that's going to completely erase a drought. Uh, exceptional drought at, at last check towards the Bakersfield area. Obviously the extreme and uh, severe drought across much of the West. So again, every bit we get is good. We want to keep these uh, stormy patterns going though through the water season and really build up that snowpack and continue to bring water to these communities. Rainfall still to come. I think three to five inches once again along coastal section. This would include the San Francisco Bay area. So could we be looking at another three inches? on the heels of what's already come down. Obviously, that means we've got areas that are saturated, more flash flooding, more landslides, more mudslides could be an issue, and then high elevation snow also piling up. This, as we go through the day today, you can see some rain showers. Things begin to ramp up into the evening. So we had a brief break. Moving into midweek, though, that's when the next system really shows up in a big way. More waves of rain, more high elevation snow. So again, Get ready. Welcome back into Weather Underground. We are very closely watching severe weather chances, not just today, but yeah. into tomorrow. So an active start to the new year. We've got a special extended coverage for you throughout the night as Torcon values are as high as a five today for some big metro areas. Yeah, so Little Rock heads up for you, Shreveport, Memphis, all kind of that medium range for a tornado today. So heads up, especially later on this evening, a place like Memphis could happen well after dark. So just be prepared once the sun goes down, that storms could strike. Yeah, we're going to get 
break it all down for you, time it out for you to keep you and your family safe. Time and time again, a lot of folks, especially during holidays, you're just home. Yeah. Maybe you're in a mobile home or, or uh, maybe a modular home that's mm -hmm. not all that sturdy. Find a safe place to go today. Yeah, no shame. Uh, call somebody you know. If you are no. the person with the sturdy home, call somebody else. Invite them save somebody's over. life. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, really, really critical because that is the worst place to be. And we've got the risk of tornadoes today. And when we look at the brighter colors here, you can see shading. This is telling us our tornado parameters. So the brighter colors indicative of the higher likelihood or the greater conditions to support tornadic storms. There are storms out there and uh, damaging winds are going to be a big enough issue. Again, trees into homes so many times cause too many people to lose their lives. So again, that's why we say treat most storms like you would a tornado warning and watch for that threat of falling trees. By 4 o'clock, again, we've got that tornado parameter here across sections of eastern Texas into parts of Arkansas and eastern Oklahoma. So generally communities to the east of Oklahoma City, these would be spots to watch by 8 o'clock. Now conditions becoming a little bit more favorable across parts of Oklahoma or Arkansas for the tornadoes, the rotating storm. So we watch for that into the evening and Overnight, while it does drop down, you don't see as much red, there's still the threat. So we've got to watch overnight hours or have a way to get alerted should those warnings come in. If you have the opportunity, avail availability to sleep in your safe spot, go ahead and do that. Put yourself already there. And then by tomorrow afternoon, you can see we're looking at those storms continuing to race east. More of a line of storms, at least at lunchtime, and you can see less of a tornado threat, more of that yellow. So again, kind of that lower end of that risk of tornadoes. And down near the Gulf Coast, it rises a bit during the afternoon, but still, I think damaging winds will be a significant danger with tornado spin-ups along that line of possibility. Today, it's a Torcon of five for Little Rock, anticipating a tornado watch to be issued, and there is that chance that we could get a stronger tornado, so don't want to rule that out by any means. I know it's not a Torcon of seven or eight, but with a Torcon of five, the risk is certainly there. Flooding, also a concern. Flood watches are posted. Could see flash flood warnings go up as rounds of heavy rain move through across the Gulf Coast and into the southeast. So that would bring Tuscaloosa, would bring Biloxi into play for severe weather tomorrow. The greatest risk in that darkest shade of that burgundy, that wine red. So uh, likely for Hattiesburg, for Monroeville, even over towards the Georgia state line, West Georgia in play for severe weather, including the Atlanta metro area, especially the west side, a place like uh, Villa Rica, Douglasville would be in play. Huntsville, Nashville, Tennessee also dealing with at least some risk of severe weather. Maybe not the greatest risk, but Torcon's in that two to three range across sections of much of the south. Where we get that Torcon of five would be down along the Gulf Coast, so areas north of New Orleans, over into the state of Mississippi and southern sections of Alabama. And once again, we'd be likely looking at tornado watches posted, and we would likely be looking at the risk of some of those stronger tornadoes if we get them. Here's a look at the future radar. Tomorrow morning, we've got our line of thunderstorms racing across the Mississippi River up through western Tennessee. Moving through during the day, uh, we'll see things break up a little bit, and you can see some more thunderstorms building on the back side of this. Things stay especially active down near the Gulf Coast. A little bit more moisture to work with there, so I think that's where we'll see the strongest of storms and the heaviest of rain. So south of Birmingham, generally south of Jackson. Not to say you can't get the stronger storms up there, but you can see most of the coverage focused closer to the Gulf Coast. Monroeville, Montgomery, even Dothan, Alabama, watching for rounds of thunderstorms thunderstorms through the afternoon, even evening. A place like Atlanta, it's going to be late Tuesday into early Wednesday that the thunderstorms work into your area. So an overnight threat will again be an issue tomorrow. We look at Torcon values closer to the New Orleans area in that three to five range, depending on where you are. So along I-10, likely in that three range, we get up uh, north on 59. That's where we see that Torcon of five. So north side of Lake Pontchartrain, up towards the Hattiesburg, Biloxi area. That's where that Torcon goes up a bit. I know New Orleans, again, you've had uh, recent history with tornadic storms. You don't want to see any, but be prepared for it tomorrow afternoon. You can see a few rounds. Heavy downpours could also leave us some flash flooding there in the city. But again, I think the greatest risk of tornadoes would be focused a little farther to the north and east. Mike? All right, Alex, thank you for Minnesota, or Minneapolis, Minnesota, looking at 8 to 12 inches by the time all is said and done. Right now, we've got some light snow around Casper and Rapid City. Ice reported in North Platte and then on the warm side of this, we've got temps not warm, but 
in the mid 30s with rain. So the precip showing us what side of the storm we're on. Ice storm warnings across southern Minnesota into parts of Iowa, the north and west part of the state, eastern sections of Nebraska, and a very little bit of South Dakota. Then we've got our winter storm warnings, our winter weather advisories also posted. So unfortunately, an impactful storm as many of us are getting back into the grind, back to work, back to school. Not going to be easy out there on those roads. This afternoon, we've got some of that snow for Sioux Falls, for Valentine, North Platte, Nebraska, Minneapolis. You're going to see some bursts of snow today, but you can see kind of wavering on that edge. During the day tomorrow, that's when we see the snow really overtake parts of Minnesota and when we'll see a lot of that snow piling up. Narrow zone of rain snow mix, and then we've got the rain for places like Milwaukee, even up to Green Bay tomorrow before we see some cooler air transition into even a place like Green Bay. We end with a shot of snow. Uh, but Mike, a lot of a lot of wintry weather in play 